Well, good morning. It's good to see you. Glad that you're here. And we are going to to uh, think about making it our goal to please him. Title of the lesson, we make it our goal to please him. And that's found in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9. And Paul is talking about the totality of life. Um, we're going to be pleasing to God. And that's the, that's the goal. I love visiting the mountains. Anyone else love the mountains? Yes, the mountain lovers are here. Now, um, several vacations as a child were spent in the mountains. Just this. And uh, our honeymoon was spent in the mountains and uh, our sixth wedding anniversary. I don't know if you remember that or not. In the mountains. Yes. Two times with the kids. They were very young in the mountains. And so I asked Lee, I said, where is your favorite place? To go on vacation. And she said the beach. <laughs> so. Hmm. I. Uh, I expected her to say the mountains. Because. Well I love the mountains. And we'd been there together. So many times. We honeymooned in the mountains. You know. Um, so I thought. Well if I want to please. Or be pleasing to my wife. We'll go to the beach. Right. So today, if you ask any of our children, if you ask them if they want to go to the beach or the mountains for vacation, or if you ask them, have you been on vacation more to the mountains or to the beach? I think they would all say to the beach. Yeah. Last time we went to the mountains um, <clears throat> together as a family, I was carrying Brooke in a uh, uh, backpack, kind of a, not, not a backpack, but in a, hmm. yeah, a, a carrier. There we go. Sort of a backpack carrier for a child, made for a child. It is a stuffer in a backpack. All right, up the mountains we went. That was the last time, I, I believe the last time we went together as a family to the mountains. All the other times were to the beach. Hmm. And I thought to myself, can this happen in our relationship with God? This, this thing. I need to uh, advance that. Could this happen? Is it possible? Is it possible to assume that what is pleasing to us is obviously pleasing to God. I mean, if I like it, God surely likes it, right? I don't know if you've ever had that thought. Maybe you, maybe you have, maybe you haven't. And we may find that he prefers the beach, the mountains as well. Now, I don't think that's the case. But, but just for example, we may find that. Finish this sentence in your mind. Just in your mind, don't blurt it out, don't say anything out loud. <laughs> Answer this question. What pleases me in worship is blank. Or you may say, you may think, well, what I like about worship most is fill in the blank. Now. Answer this in your mind. What pleases me in my relationships is. Or you may say what pleases me most in relationships is. Our culture seeks to sort of condition us to be self-absorbed. I don't know if you go along with that or not, but it seems to me to be the case. To constantly be pleased or constantly be happy. And maybe you've searched one time for something 
on your computer or on your phone. You search one time for it. And wouldn't you know that if you search one time for something, you'll begin to see that uh, the suggestions for items like that or that very item popping up as ads. Oh, maybe you like this. We saw that you like that. Maybe you'll like this. All these offerings, these suggestions keep coming up. So our culture uh, seems to be um, conditioning us to be self-absorbed. You may say, well, it's not just the culture, but uh, maybe we're prone to that anyway. In James chapter 4, verses 1 through 8, James says, those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it. You commit murder. You covet something and you cannot obtain it. So you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. Hmm. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Adulterers. <laughs> he has an exclamation point there. Right? Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you suppose that it is for nothing that the scripture says God yearns jealous, jealously for um, for the, uh, the spirit that he has made to dwell in us. But he gives us, but he gives all the more grace. Therefore, it says God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Notice that resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Resist him and he'll flee. Put up some resistance. And what will he do? He'll leave. Okay, he'll flee from you. Draw near to God. Draw near to him. Get close to him. And he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. So, are you seeking what is pleasing to God? That's, that's the question. Do you know this, the, the assembly is not designed to please us? Hmm. Well, we have padded chairs. Do you remember the old hard wooden pews? We had some here. But then someone said, you can put a pad on those. You know, you can, you can pad those and they won't be so hard then to sit on, you know. And so and now we have chairs. I suggested to some that say, well, I can't be there because of this, that, or the other. And I said, you know what? We should put a, a recliner in the back. So you, I mean, I mean I'm, I'm being serious. So why? So they can be here among, among us. Wouldn't that be great? A recliner in the assembly? Are you kidding me? In the church building? A recliner? Well, <clears throat> the assembly is not designed to please us. We don't sit as Olympic judges with scorecards, 9.5, 8.6, right? We don't, we don't sit in judgment of what is taking place. We're worshiping God this morning, not ourselves. Amen? We are. We are. He is the audience. Do you believe that? He's the one that we're seeking to honor, to please. He is our audience. And so we seek to know what pleases him. And then that is what we do. We go after that. The Bible is not written to please us. The example would be where Scripture says, or Jesus says, love your enemies. <laughs> if the Bible was written to please us, it would say, you know what, treat people. Just, you know, if somebody treats you in a bad way, you just go after them. You think the worst of them and then you go, you proceed with that thought and take revenge. I mean, my oh my, you need to take revenge because that's how you feel. 
You know, just go with your gut. Go with your feelings. Whatever you feel like doing, do it. No, the Bible's not written to please us or it would say things like that. Just go with whatever you feel. Because, you know, let, let that be your guide. No, it was written as, a, as our blueprint for what pleases God. And so it says, love your enemies. Love my enemies? How do I do that? And Jesus says, let me show you. On the cross, he says, as he, as he looks upon the people there, Father, forgive them. <coughs> Because they don't know what they're doing. Yes, love your enemies. If Jesus didn't love his enemies, he wouldn't love us, right? Because there was a time when we were, Paul says at least. So, this is not about what I think is right or what you think is right. (coughs) Darren, you took my water away. I don't know. I really don't want to drink after you. I mean, love you and all, but uh, yeah. So this is not about what I think is right or what you think is right. Thank you, Mark. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 15. The way of the fool seems right to him, but a wise man listens to advice. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 25. There is a way that seems right to a man, but but in the end it leads to death. This is not about what I think is right. Thank you. It's just not. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 8 through 10. Paul says, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of the light. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And then he says, find out what pleases the Lord. Find out what pleases the Lord. And this is what Christians do. It's what we are involved in. We we find out what is pleasing to the Lord and then we do that, whatever it is. Now, it may be a struggle at times. We find out what pleases him and we say, this is going to prove difficult in my life. And so we make those kind of adjustments. The word Uh, find out here in this text in in Ephesians 5 is literally testing out and approving. That's what that is. And this word is used in secular Greek for soldiers who were tested in battle and precious metal uh, that was proved to be genuine and valuable. And the same word is used in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, test and approve. What God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. So you should try to find out. You should try to find out and practice those things which please the Lord. So let's see Jesus as our example. Let's see him as our example in pleasing, being pleasing to the father. In John chapter eight, John chapter eight, verses 12 through 29. I'm going to look at 27, 28 and 29. Won't read the whole thing. And it says this, uh, verse 27, John 8. They did not understand that he was telling them about his father. So Jesus said, when you have lifted up the son of man, then you will know that I am. What he means, the one I claim to be. I am that one. And that I do nothing of, of, of my own. I do nothing on my own, but speak just what the Father has taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do what pleases him. Now that's Jesus saying, I, I'm not here to do my own thing. I am doing what is pleasing to the Father. And so he's our example in being pleasing to the Father. So let's examine Jesus' example. Do, do nothing on your own. Seriously? Nothing? Well, I don't know that. Does God really care about what kind of chewing gum you pick? I mean, is it, do we need to stand there in prayer and contemplate what does God want? 
I don't know that that's what he's talking about, right? But do nothing on your own. Should I do this? Should I do that? Well, Jesus said that he did nothing on his own, but he spoke just what the father had taught him. So um, are you being are you willing to be taught by God? Are you willing or do you do you find yourself resisting that? I know the Bible says that, but, you know, I know the Bible says love my enemies, but really, uh, come on. What is love? Oh, well, then you go to first Corinthians 13. See, it never ends. God, God has it covered. All right. You can find out what that means. And Jesus, as our example, and he speaks just what he learned from the father. So do we speak what we have learned from God, our father? Do we speak what we've learned from scripture? Do we speak in those terms? Not that you have to walk around speaking in the king's English. All right. That's not what we're talking about. But living out. Being like God in our speech. So will you be like Jesus? That's the question. And will you do what pleases God the Father? Will we will we do that? In Colossians chapter three, verses 18 through 20 says this wives submit. This is a scripture that well, the world doesn't like and sometimes People in general don't like, right? But this is what God says. Wives, submit to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. And then he says, children, obey your parents in everything for this pleases the Lord. So in essence, what we're what he's getting at is this. Our family relationships need to be pleasing to him, right? Right? Yes. 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 Our family relationships, whatever that family looks like, right? Uh, We need to be pleasing to God. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, I urge you then, first of all, that requests and prayer, requests, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and all those in authority. That we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior. Who wants all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. So our lives need to be pleasing to him. Full of godliness. Full of holiness. That's what he wants. In 1 John chapter 3. Verses 11 through 24, John says, this is the message you heard from the beginning. We should love one another. Do not be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. People wonder, well, why did why did Cain murder Abel? He's telling us right here. Um, Do not be surprised, my brothers. If the world hates you, we know that we have passed from death to life because we we love our brothers. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Anyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life in him. This is how verse 16. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need, has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. This then is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. Whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Dear friends, If our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God, verse 22, and receive from him anything we ask because we obey his commands and do what pleases him. So our family relationships need to be pleasing to him. 
Our lives need to be pleasing to him, full of godliness and holiness. And and now in first John, um, living pleasing to him brings us confidence to approach him. It brings us confidence to approach him in prayer. Does God want to hear from you? He does. My kids used to ask as I would drive them home from school. I would ask, how did your day go? And I forget who said what, but one of them really dug down deep on this um, and said, uh, well, you already know. Why are you asking me this? You already know. And immediately my mind turned to me uh, and my prayer life to God. It's like, does he not already know what's going on in my life? Then why do I need to pray? People say that. People think that. Hmm. If God already knows, then why do I need to tell him? As a parent, I wanted them. I wanted their perspective. I wanted to hear it from them. And you know what could happen? I could then, I could hear what they're saying about their day. And then I could frame it. In a way that they could not. As they were living that life. Whatever grade they were in. And they they had that perspective. We're living on this earth. And we have this perspective. And God can frame what is going on in our lives. With his framework. And maybe it doesn't always make sense. But we do know this. He is with us. We may not understand every single thing. But we can never say to God. You don't care about me. Why should I ever talk to you? You already know what's going on. Why in the world would I say anything to you about it? Because you already know it. I believe it's because he wants to hear from us because he loves us. I love my children and I wanted to hear their perspective on the day. And now as adults, they will say to me, I get it. I see now. But as children, they could not see that. Why are you asking me this? Why? 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 So. Our task as the church that belongs to Jesus Christ is to find out what pleases God, find out what pleases him and do it. And then we reap the benefit. We reap the blessings of this. We really do. Our lives need to be consumed with what pleases the Lord and what that brings to us is peace and confidence. I'm telling you, that's what the world needs. It's what we don't find in the world, but we should find in the church. Peace and confidence, right? We should find that because that's what God brings to our lives. And so we want to get to the place in our lives where what is pleasing to God is pleasing to us. Not that we look at God and say, I like this, so you should like this. But we look and we see and we see through the life of Jesus. We see in Scripture. This is what God likes. This is what God wants. And so we say, since you like that, that's what I'm going to work on. That's what I'm going to give you. That's what I want. Since it pleases you, I want that to please me as well. And we go at it from that angle. Listen, God sent his son. He sent his son so that we could be pleasing to him. And the way we're found pleasing to God is that we are sin free. We're without sin. And the only way I figured out through scripture for us to be sin free is to be in Christ Jesus. To be covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. To be buried with him. In baptism, to be raised in a new life, to be constantly with our lives and with with our very mouths, confessing that Jesus is the Lord. He is the Christ. He is the Savior. And when we sin, we repent of it. We turn from it. We say, I don't want to do this anymore. And we resist Satan. And God, we know, gives us the way out. Any temptation, there's a way out of it. He says he won't allow us to be tempted beyond what we're able to handle. So guess what? Every temptation that comes our way, God gives with that temptation. He's not tempting us, but the evil one is. And we 
are given the way out. Isn't that a great thing? Isn't that a wonderful God to serve? And so what he wants from us, he wants us to be in his son so that we can be sin free. Listen, if you're not in Christ this morning, consider that. Consider that this morning. There'll be a shepherd at the front and he'll uh, when you come, if you decide to come to him and 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 say, I, I want to be baptized into Christ, I want to be in Christ. Or you may say, I don't know what all that means. And we'll, I'll study with you. Someone will study with you. We'll just use the scriptures. That's it. And we'll come to an understanding of who Jesus is and why he's so important and how we can be in him, because that is vitally important to us or to him as we walk on this earth. So if you need Christ this morning, would you come as we stand and sing?